Depending on how you're using your digital twin, you might need to use the trim tool. And if that's the case, this is how it's done. I'm on the model page here, so let's just go into edit. And you can see that with this model, there was a bit of the outside captured. And in doing so, from some of these balconies out here, some trees were captured. And from the front, you can see the street was captured as well. I don't want all that. So to clean it up a little bit, I can simply use the trim tool to hide some of this geometry or mesh, thereby making the dollhouse look a lot cleaner and neater. So I'll just go into the trim tool right down here. And the first thing you'll notice is that this tool is in fact below this little line. So it really doesn't matter what view I'm in. You can see up here, I'm currently in the base view. I've got these other views. If you're not sure what I mean by views, I do have a views and layers video that I link to in the corner, but basically it doesn't matter what view you're currently in as you're applying the trim blocks because they do apply across all views. Now, before we dive in, I do just want to point out, you can see up here, we have all floors as well as each individual floor listed below. And currently, because I don't have any trim blocks created, you can see that everything is zero. The individual floors you can see are zero out of 10 total possible trim blocks, but we'll get into the total number of trim blocks that you can have per floor as well as per model in a bit. But for now, what I wanna start out doing is just creating a trim block that pretty much isolates the entire house as a whole. So I will do that into all floors. If I simply select one of the floors or all floors here, it simply expands this view and shows me all the trim blocks that are in this floor. What I need to do is make sure that my floor selector right here is set to all floors as it is right now. Now I can go ahead and press the add trim button and you can see that my trim block was created and it is affecting all the floors. Briefly before I dive into how I tweak this particular block, I'll just show you up here you have top, side and 3D. You also have quick keys if you're interested, two and three. Three will give you the top view, two will give you the 3D view. And over here you've got position, scale and rotation. The only one that does not have a quick key is side. And when you get into side, you can use these little arrow keys up here to rotate between the sides. I like to start by using the top view and position. And I can just use these arrow keys to move this around. I can press the little green block to move it in a couple different directions. But most of the time I do constrain the movement to one axis or another. I just feel like it makes it a little bit easier. So in this case, the positioning is fine. I'll press the number five on my keyboard and now expand this out over here. Expand this over here. Contract this one so it's about like that. And contract this one as well. I'm blocking the entire house. Now that I've got the top done, I'm gonna to go to the side view. Make sure that this is just above the roof line. This is just below the lowest floor and that should do it. Now, in this case, the reason why I'm encompassing everything that I wanna keep with the trim block as opposed to trimming away the outside is because I can use this tool right here. It says keep mesh. I also have it right here. And that basically keeps everything inside the trim block and gets rid of everything outside the trim block. So this works as a really great way of trimming everything from the outside of the property without having to create four individual trim blocks on every side. So before I hit the green check mark, I'm just gonna go into 3D view and make sure that everything that I want is trimmed away. That looks pretty good. Now you'll notice that I do still have some things right up here. I don't wanna use this trim block to trim those away because that'll get rid of the sidewalk that I do wanna keep. So I'll create another trim block for that. Still within all floors, I'll go ahead and press add trim again. Go into position. I can move this up, back out a little bit, move it over. Don't wanna grab the house, just wanna do that. Scale it down a bit. Doesn't matter if it's out here or in here. I just like to keep it a little closer to the mesh. So make sure I grab everything. And again, finally, just check it out into 3D view. Make sure that I have everything I want to get rid of without getting rid of the stuff I don't want to get rid of. So right here, I want to hang on to these columns. It looks like I have a little tiny bit more right there. So I'll expand this out there. All right, that looks pretty good. So in this one, of course, I'm hiding everything that is inside of the trim block. One last trim block to get rid of some of these remaining branches right here. Certainly not a must. Just hit the number four on my keyboard to move into position. I'll go into the top view, go into side view, press number five to go into scale. Move this across over here. I really don't need it to be that high, but it's fine. Go back to this side view and I'll see the 3D view just as a last kind of measure to make sure that everything is gone. All right, that looks pretty good to me. 
the check. Now I have some bits of mesh in the back of the house that I want to address. But before we do that, check out what happened over here. Because I created three trim blocks in all floors, that actually took away from the total number of trim blocks I can have per floor. So while I used to have a per floor quota of up to 10 trim blocks, now it's down to a total number of seven because I have these three that span across all floors. So definitely something to keep in mind as you're creating trim blocks, which floor they're being applied to. All right, moving on to the next trim blocker that I want to create. I want to get rid of this mesh that is right above this area here right there i want to clean that up a little bit so let's first figure out what floor that's on so it's on the main floor and you can see that my roof line here is at a little bit of an angle so i'm gonna to have to rotate this trim block let's go ahead and create this trim block i'll start with the top view and i'll start by positioning this at the number four hit the number five to go into scale I don't need it to be this big go into the side view now all right so it's much too high keep it up there so this is all I need. Let's go to this other side. Yeah, 3D view real quick. This block covers everything, but again, I want to rotate this block. We'll go into rotation. And rotation is one of those things that, as you can see, it gets a little bit confusing in this uh, 3D view. So I like to see this from the side view. Now there's no question which axis I'm gonna be rotating. Normally I use this outside circle to just grab it and rotate it this way. After it's been rotated, I'll go back into position and move this to make sure that I've got the right angle, back into rotation, and back into position. And that's it, check this out in the 3D view. Looks pretty good, I can see from down below, I may have made it a little bit too close, I'm trimming away some of this mesh. So I'm just gonna pull back a little bit right there, then hit the check. If I go ahead and look at all floors now again, you can see that it is starting to come together. The model is looking a lot cleaner already. Let me get out of this tool so I don't see all of these lines. Without all the outlines of the trim blocks, I just find that it's a lot easier to see what else needs to get trimmed away. And it looks like I've got a little bit more mesh right over here that I can get rid of and some reflected mesh from the glass on the balcony right out here. So not a problem creating some of these. But what I wanted to show you back in the trim tool is now that I've got these three trim blocks up here, and you can see this trim block on the main floor now counts as one of seven. I can move this trim block by using the three dot menu right over here, but if I move it, then it's not going to apply to the same bit of mesh that's on the main floor. So I'm gonna keep it here. I can rename this trim block so it won't just be called trim. That'll help me kind of find it if I need to later on. I can also just click on it and it'll show me which one this is being referred to. If I do need to delete any of these, that's also under the three dot menu right over here. I can also hide this trim block using the hide tool right there. So now you can see the mesh in this view. It'll probably be easier if I show you this one here. Tapping that, you can see all the mesh appears back again. And of course, showing the trim block applies it to the mesh. And that's actually something that's very important to keep in mind because these trim blocks are actually not trimming anything away. They're not destroying or deleting the mesh that you have as part of your digital twin. They are simply hiding it. So as you can tell, for the most part, you'll be using trim blocks to hide mesh or the geometry of your digital twin from your visitors in the dollhouse view. But it also does affect the inside view in the transitions between scan positions. And this is exactly what I mean by that. Let's go into this other model here. And if I move from inside, I just go outside, you can already see right in that transition, that right up here, and in fact, you can also see by the circle around my cursor here, that there is mesh right here. Just like there is on this door, there's also mesh right here. If I press the zero key on my keyboard, there it is. You can see the, the mesh or the geometry of my digital twin. And in the transition, you can see that it kind of hits you right in the face as you go through it. I go back in this direction and see it right here too. So the way to address that is by creating another trim block. So let's go into the trim tool here and you can see there's my doorway. I wanna trim that away. Press the add trim, move this into place. Go back into top with number five to change this size quite a bit. Go back to adjust the position. Okay, this time it's definitely gonna help to see this in the 3D view. Definitely much too big. Let's go back into scale. I don't want to get rid of the floor there, but I do want to get pretty close right about there. Okay, so that looks good. I'm going to get out of this tool. And if I go back in here, now when I move forward, you can see that the transition is significantly smoother. It doesn't look like I just got hit in the face. However, if I go back into the trim tool here 
and I disable this from inside view. Now I didn't delete the trim block, it's still there, but you can see that on the inside view, the transitions between scan positions are no longer affected. Now that being said, remember that the trim blocks are not getting rid of or deleting the mesh from your digital twin. They're simply hiding it. So this will not have an effect on the navigation itself, just the transition between navigation points. If you've tried something like this, scanning the door both open and closed, assuming that you'll be able to navigate from outside, inside, and vice versa, but you can't, unfortunately, adding a trim block is not what's gonna change that. Navigation, or the ability to transition from one scan position to another, is determined by Cortex as the model data is being processed. So the only way to address that issue is by using the trim markings in the Matterport app itself prior to uploading the model data.